Hey guys, it's Julie Malolo. I'm a life coach here in Manhattan. My website is yourdreamslifecoach.com. I'm going to talk about ENFP strengths today. I'm going to talk about the top two strengths ENFPs have and then just some random other ones. I'm an ENFP, so I've been studying personality types for a really, really long time, um, but also just being an ENFP, I think it's a little easier to understand what our strengths are. Now, I want to say that whatever your type is, you have your top two strengths and it's hard to value them sometimes because they're just so natural to you and you don't, it's almost like subconscious, like you just don't even notice that these things are strengths because you tend to think, well, yeah, doesn't everyone do that? Like, it's almost like someone complimenting you for like breathing air and you're like, uh, thanks, doesn't everybody breathe air? And it's like, no, they don't, you know. <laughs> Some people are fish and they live in the ocean and they breathe differently than you. Well, that's a really weird example, but um, yeah. So ENFP strengths. All right. Our expert intuition is like our main thing. And so new ideas are just constantly coming to our mind, like new possibilities. It's about what could happen, not what will happen. And yeah, we do think about that too. Like we do think about what will happen but what will happen is more introverted intuition and i versus any that is extroverted intuition so that's the one that we have so we'll sit around and just oh this could happen my life could go this direction this direction this direction that direction or maybe that direction and we don't really come to a conclusion we're kind of more like well, I know that all of these things are possible and then a lot of other things are possible that I just haven't even thought of yet or I haven't learned about yet. So we leave a lot of space and room for these new possibilities. Um, and I think that's one reason that we kind of like to keep things open-ended because it's like, well, I like this now, but then in like five years, am I still going to like that? And so maybe I should leave some wiggle room in this situation versus locking myself into something. Um, now, it doesn't mean that ENFPs can't commit to things, but we have to really know that we really love that thing. For example, for me, I went to life coaching school when I was 25. I think I had just turned 25. Um... That was so long ago. I'm 38 now. It was a long time ago. And I remember, like, once I really learned what life coaching was and that, like, it's not advice and you're, like, sort of uncovering everything by asking questions and then you're getting them to use their own strengths and, you know, you're just kind of helping mold and shape, but you're not actually, like, telling them the advice. I was like, wow, this is such a perfect fit for me that this is something that I could do the rest of my life. And I actually had never felt that way for sure about a career. Like I always liked writing since I was a kid. I always wrote. I always knew I would have writing in my life. I always knew I would have art in my life. Like I'm just very artsy. I like doing lots of artsy stuff like, like that heart I made out of duct tape. And the, like the little paintings and everything, you know, just I like artsy stuff. You know, I did like my own highlights. Like I just like, I'm always going to have artsy stuff in my life. But it wasn't like I felt comfortable committing to a lifetime of art because I don't know. I was just kind of like, I don't know if I want to do this day in, day out, you know. So I kind of left it very open. And life coaching is so open-ended that... I mean, like, clients come and go, like, they have a crisis that we need to attack, and then it's like, you might not hear from them for, like, six months a year, and that's totally cool. That's just how it works. Um, and I like that about it, because it, it keeps it new and keeps it fresh. So we have that extroverted intuition, um, new ideas, and sometimes it's, like, funny, silly stuff, like, oh my god, like, wouldn't this be funny if XYZ happened? But then it can also be really serious, like, um, with like politics or with, you know, improving things in the world, we think like, wow, what would happen if we fixed this problem or if we changed this or, you know, that kind of thing. That's our expert intuition. And then we have introverted feeling. And that is really about things like right and wrong, both for us and for other people. Um, and it's about like ethics and, you know, 
is this good or bad, basically? And the way that we determine that, unlike other types, because lots of types think about what's good and bad. I mean, everyone does to some extent. But it really is like a more of a personal conclusion that we come to. We don't really look too much to like authority figures or what does society say is right. We look more to what do we think is like universally right. Um, and then we sort of fight for that. So we're willing to fight against like something that if you went to a party, most people would disagree with you on or it'd be a topic that they didn't know anything about and they would just like look at you weird. Like that's not the popular opinion. We'll fight for that if we really believe that that is right and that is good. Like something like plastic straws. Right now, nine out of ten people would be like, plastic straws are bad. You're evil if you use a plastic straw. You're going to kill a sea turtle. Okay, that'd be the like prevailing view. Um, and if an ENFP knows about that and knows that maybe that is not such a big problem, or maybe there's a bigger problem that needs our attention more, um, or maybe there's a different solution. Like maybe it's not about getting rid of the straws. It's about something else that needs to be done. And I'm not debating about straws. Please don't leave me comments about straws. I mean, you can if you want to. I just like, I'm not really interested in that debate right now. But if we feel that like, no, 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 it's not really about the plastic straw. It's about this other thing. What we really have to do is clean up like, for example, the massive amount of plastic that's coming out of China or something like that, then we're going to put our energy into that and we're going to be willing to tell people that even if it goes against like that society view. And that's one way that ENFPs can look like thinkers because people will be like, wait a second, you're actually doing something that is making it a little bit emotionally uncomfortable for some people. Whereas an ENFJ, for example, would typically support the popular view of society and society says plastic straws are bad, so plastic straws are bad. That's what society said society must know, so then they'll fight for that. So they'll put all their, you know, eggs in that basket of I'm going to fight for no straws. Whereas ENFPs are a little bit more skeptical of like, well, who is this expert? They're the expert, but what's their background? You know, what do they really know? Um, what's their track record? What are their motivations? Like, ENFPs are very into motivations. Are, are they linked to, like, the sippy cup industry and they just want everyone to switch to sippy cups that are also plastic and also just as bad for the sea turtle and everybody? You know, we want to look into this and be like, is this really about straws or is this really just you know, the sippy cup industry is trying to put the straw business out of business so that they can sell more sippy cups to adults. Like, who knows? I just made that up. I have no idea if that's even a thing. Maybe it, maybe it is. Maybe it's all an evil plot. I don't know. But the introverted feeling, that's one aspect of it, of what is right and wrong. But another aspect of it is um, knowing how close you are to people and knowing how close other people are to each other. Like we can often just look at people that we don't even know and have a pretty, pretty good idea, like how close those people are. I mean, yeah, again, everyone does this. We all people watch, but we will pick up on those little signs and symbols of closeness and between others and between ourselves and other people. And we can also usually get a pretty good sense of how close someone wants to get to us. Like, are they wanting to sort of keep us at a, dis at a distance for some reason? Like they want to stay on that acquaintance level? Or are they wanting to be like best friends? Or are they wanting to, like, are they wanting to date us casually? Or are they wanting to like marry us? You know, like we will know these things and it's not that we don't have like doubts or whatever or that we don't obsess about it the same way every teenage girl would. And I say that like guys can be like a teenage girl at times too. You know what I mean? We all get like that where we're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? But ENFPs are more likely to have a pretty good sense of like, okay, I can read this person. I know what they want from me. And, and I know like how close they want to be. So 
and of course, I'm talking about emotionally healthy ENFPs, and not everybody is emotionally healthy these days. We have so many like narcissists and sociopaths and people that have brain disorders and thinking disorders, and those people are going to struggle with these things. Even if they are an ENFP, those things might kind of become hard for them. Just like if someone's autistic, they might not read those social cues, but they're still going to have the ENFP strengths like underneath. Okay, so it's a little complicated. So I'm really only talking about emotionally healthy ENFPs just to keep it simple because everyone is so unique, you know. But that said, that doesn't mean you're an ENFP just because you want to be an ENFP, which is another problem I've talked about in like other videos. Sometimes everybody thinks they're an ENFP. I don't know why. It's not like any better than any other type. We have our same struggles. You know, we're disliked by people just like every other type is. Like, no one type is perfect and just everybody likes you. No, it doesn't work like that. Everyone has people who aren't compatible with you, who don't appreciate what you're bringing to the table, who even find your strengths annoying and not useful. So everyone has that. It's not just, you know, like there's no one perfect type. So, yeah, we're very into, like, and again, like this stuff just comes so, so naturally that you don't think about it and you don't really give yourself credit for it. And what whatever your type is, it's the same thing. So I think it's good to like consciously learn what your strengths are so that you can start to appreciate them, bring them into your work and in all parts of your life. You know, um, you can appreciate yourself more that way. So... Um, yeah, we, we kind of know where we stand with people. Like, I would have, and it's not like we're psychic. It's not that we can't get screwed over by people, you know? Like, if people lie to us, of course, like, we can get screwed over. But for the most part, like, we have a pretty good sense of emotionally where somebody is in terms of their closeness and also our, um, how we feel about other people. Like, we could draw you a diagram of, like, this is every person in my life, and I'm going to show you how close we are. And I could put them, like, planets. Like, you know, I could draw you a solar system of every single person in my life, how close we are. And it's not like there's one rule to that, because there might be people that, like, I haven't spoken to in years that we still have a level of closeness that I know, like, if I ask them what they think about it, I know what it would be, and I know what, what I think it would be. And most of the time that does match, you know, because people are reciprocal, right? Um, so we're like, it, it's pretty unusual for us to, for example, not know if someone likes us. Um, there can be exceptions, especially with some of these thinker people that are like really hard to read. Even so, we will find those small signs and usually still pretty much no. So it's like, you often won't hear an ENFP being like, oh, I just, I wonder, like, do they like me? Do they hate me? Like, we might say that about like a stranger or someone that, I don't know, maybe the waiter that we like haven't ever spoken to. And we're like, do you think the waiter likes me? Like, I've had no interaction with him, but I wonder. That's probably the only time we would say that. If we actually spoke to somebody, we would pick up on all those things and like have a sense. So that's our FI. It's about that kind of bond that we create with somebody. And that is to any type that has FI or values FI, that is like a huge thing for us. It like gives our life meaning to, and I mean, lots of things give our life meaning, but for an ENFP, it's probably one of the most important things. Just like with an ESFP, like those emotional bonds that you have, like it's just, it's, it's so important, you know? And it's not that things like creativity and art aren't important, but I just know that like when you have, a really close relationship like that or several like I mean I mean like if you have a lot of friends not like if you have like 10 husbands that's not what I mean like if you have like really close friends family you know and then like your partner um we value that because ENFPs we're sort of like that bird I mean not to talk about like Nelly Furtado but yeah we're like that bird that flies away 
I do think Nelly Furtado is probably an ENFP. Um, but the thing she doesn't talk about in that song is like, we're the bird who wants to fly back and have a perch that is our actual home. And okay, maybe that sounds kind of sappy, but like that's what ENFPs are on the inside really about. Because of that, we can look really crazy and chaotic because of all the NE and the fact that we're extroverts and we're constantly wanting to like expand our mind, learn new things, you know, make sure we weren't wrong about something that we learned. And we do that by learning new stuff and sort of comparing it and just expanding and growing, growing emotionally, growing um, in terms of just learning about new things. And just, it's all about like expansion, right? Um, so we can look flighty and, you know, a lot of people will have that feeling about ENFPs like, oh my gosh, can they commit to anything? Can they commit to relationships? Can they commit to work? And I think really the key is, well, number one, are they emotionally healthy? And that goes for anybody of any type. Emotionally unhealthy people, typically you can't trust them, right? Which is a trait of being like the pathologies, the personality disorders, like that's an aspect of it, um, some more than others, but basically they're not trustworthy. So that's a separate issue. But just because we're running around doing all this stuff or like we seem scattered because we are, NE makes you scattered. Like I have trouble finishing my sentence sometimes because I'm just like, wait, where was I even going with that? But we're a bird who wants to come back, wants to come back to that perch. That's what it comes down to. That's very relaxing to us. We we really value that stability. We value having those rocks in our life. And those people can be any type, as long as they give us that feeling that like I have the freedom to fly away, but when I come back to my perch, they're gonna be hanging out on the perch too, most likely. I mean, they don't have to be there like every minute, but we're gonna to wanna to hang on this perch together, okay? And most likely when I fly back, they're probably gonna be around. They're gonna be hanging around, hanging around by the perch, all right? So we really, really value that. And because of that, we can be super, super committed to things that we, that we love, basically. Like that's how the FI works. So if we love our work, we can stay with it for a long time. Like I've done life coaching since, so I went to this school when I was 25 and, and then I started out like doing like free coaching and stuff. And then when I was 26, I moved to New York and was coaching, coaching, coaching. Then I was doing like paid coaching here. Um, and now I'm 38. So that's like 13 years, you know, and it's not like I sat there and I was like, I'm going to commit to this career. It wasn't like that the way that maybe some other types would kind of be like, well, for better or worse, I'm going to commit to this. For me, I was like, there's a really good chance I'm going to want to do this the rest of my life. Like I could do this the rest of my life because it's such a good fit for me. Um, but it's not so much like this contract that I'm making it's more just yeah I'm probably gonna want to do that forever like I'm probably gonna want to eat chocolate for the rest of my life because it's delicious yeah that's most likely gonna play out that way <laughs> but I don't have to make this commitment and be like I'm going to like decide to eat chocolate forever and by the way I don't eat sugar so all the chocolate I eat has to be like stevia or I have to make it myself or whatever however that is something that I probably will do the rest of my life is eat chocolate because I don't see any reason not to and I love it. So that's how we are. Like end result, we can be very committed, extremely reliable um, about the things that we want to be, but we don't like being forced into it. And that's where freedom is a really important thing for ENFPs. So like if you give us the option to fly away, we might just like sit on the couch with you and watch movies all day. <laughs> Cause it's like, well, I mean, I could go out to the club, but eh, this is kind of more fun. Let's sit on the perch, you know, but like having that freedom is really important. Cause like, that's how you grow. And then every now and again, you do need to like get off of the freedom couch and fly away to the bar or the club or the, art class or the, you know, whatever the new experience is or go meet some new people. It's important to keep growing, right? So if we're with somebody who's like, 
no, no, no. On Fridays, we're always going to just sit on the couch. And then Saturdays, no, we shouldn't go out. We should just fold the laundry on Saturdays. I don't think we should be like doing any socializing or any new things that day. And then Sunday, you know, we should just finish cleaning and go to the grocery store. Like we will run away from that because it's like there's no opportunity there for anything growth wise, anything new. There's no flexibility. And like we feel like we're in prison. Like I may as well be in prison if someone's going to like decide my whole routine for me and be like, you know, this is when we sleep. This is when we eat. We don't do anything else. Like, no, no. And that's the problem. ISTJs, like in socionics, that's our worst type for ENFPs. And again, there's nothing wrong with ISTJs. That's just how they do things. They like schedules that are the same all the time. And that is super useful in a lot of ways. Um, depending on like someone's job or whatever, it can be super efficient and a good thing. And they like that. They like living like that. So that's cool. That works for them. ENFJs love that. That's perfect for them. For an ENFP, that's like, it's like a jail sentence or something. And same with jobs, you know, that's a hard thing with jobs. If there's no room for no new ideas or to do things differently. Like even if there's a daily schedule within that, we want to be using our creativity and able to like do dynamic things. We want to, dynamic I think is a good word for it. We want to like be creative and kind of use our energy for something. And we'll, we will work really, really hard. You know, it's not about that, but we just need that, that room to use our ME and all that. And then because of our FI bonds, like we can really, really commit to people and things because that's our perch. That's our home. We want to come back to that. We don't want to just like fly around the sky, like in loops again and again and again, like just for the heck of it. We want to go out there and fly around, explore, learn, grow, be like, oh my gosh, I sound, I saw this amazing mountain when I was flying around and like we can go have a picnic there and like you know what we can do we can like meet the neighbors and then we could actually make a club and we can get all the birds to fly and like meet other new birds oh my gosh and maybe we can make that into a business it could be like a bird meetup group okay like that's a weird example I give the weirdest examples you guys but like that's basically what we want to be able to do but we want to be able to fly back to the perch to tell you all the things that we discovered and to tell you our new idea, to see if you want to help us out, you know, like maybe people that are like supportive of our new ideas are great. You know, people that are like, oh, that'd be so cool. Like, I wonder if this could work or that could work or who could be like, oh, you know what? I could print up some flyers and then like make them into a paper airplane and then like throw them at random birds and birds would be like, oh look at this, there's a new meetup group to meet new birds. And they might like help us with that, right? Like we really value that kind of thing. And of course, some of these ideas we're going to forget about either because we don't love them enough, we're not passionate enough, or maybe it just doesn't 100% make sense. Like maybe like birds don't really want to go to meetup groups. Like maybe birds are meeting each other on the electrical lines as it is. They're having their socials. They're all flocking together as it is. They don't really want to meet other birds. Who knows, right? <laughs> There's lots of reasons something might not go forward, but we want that freedom and that is about our ME. Extrovert intuition is about the new ideas and the freedom to explore those new ideas um, and to see all the, the amazing things that could happen, both for yourself, other people, society, the world. And I think like as a life coach, that's where I get excited. You find somebody who's been sort of like trapped in a box their whole life and you're like you know what there's a possibility of getting out of that box and it's just like whoa you know like that could completely change somebody's life and it doesn't have to be a huge thing one new idea one new way of seeing something could get someone to step back and be like whoa and I mean what they end up doing who knows right because it's complicated we're complicated just like life coaching itself is complicated. There's a lot of factors and there's luck and there's just timing and all of these things. But that's the power of new ideas. 
you can completely change something by looking at it a little bit differently. Like, well, what if we looked at it this way, you know, or what if we tried one of these things over here or those things? And then usually something gets improved, you know, and it's, it's just very cool to see. Um, so that's our expert intuition. And it's something that ENFP is just naturally, all of us do it. We, we just create ideas so easily. So, um, when I used to be an ad agency copywriter, which is where you, you know, you're working on like ads or I did other kinds of writing where you're like, you know, same kind of thing, writing ads or just writing copy, you know, like words that sell stuff. Um, that was the part that I liked about it would be they would like come to me and be like, look, we have written about this product like 500 times. We're bored of it. Everyone is bored of it. The customers are bored of it. It's just boring. Like no one wants to read, to read about this. And then I would try to like really step back and think of a new way to see the benefit of that product, like to see maybe a really unusual way that that helps you. That was also true and real, right? And I would get really excited, like, oh my gosh, like, no one can figure out how to make this product interesting. Like, I really want to find a way to do that now, you know, and I'm sure there's something. So that was one thing I really liked. Um, even though I had like a set schedule and all of that, that gave me like total room to just like be that bird who's flying, right? And, um, also with like introverted feeling, I brought a lot of feeling to the things I was writing about. Like even when I was writing about science and like health topics, I would bring it back to like, what does that mean for you and your life and like your loved ones, you know, and things like that. I would always bring it back to that because that, you know, our feelings really do matter and our feelings are huge in our decisions, um, so that was like fulfilling for me also. I always like putting a lot of that FI type of feeling in my writing, which is different than FE. FE is much more expressive and it's much more um, kind of in your face. FI is kind of a little bit more of like a deeper feeling of like maybe being sentimental or like reflecting on like, oh, I just appreciate this person so much. Like I feel so close to them or like, I admire them in these ways, or it's just kind of a an internal feeling, which is why it's an introverted function. So that was just some info about ENFP's top two strengths. I hope that that was interesting. I definitely did not cover everything in those those two functions. Um, and again, I am talking about socionics, but in my experience, a lot of people in Myers Briggs really are the same type as in socionics because most of the time, people are typing themselves based on the written description, not so much on the functions. And so a lot of the time you'll be an ENFP in both in both systems. Like for me, that was the case. And I have just known a lot of other people. So, um, yeah, feel free to comment if you have, you know, experiences with ENFPs or if you are an ENFP, feel free to give me some input. And, um, or if you have any opinions about that kind of thing and thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe if you want to, that'd be great. And if you'd be willing to like it, that would be nice. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching.